thing. Come on, Grace. You, come on, come on, come on. What, how do you help somebody when you don't have no money to help them? How, how can you lift somebody up when you don't have anything to lift yourself up? How? What can you share with them when you have nothing to share yourself? Peter said, I don't have no money, but I got a message. And that message is you can get up from your situation. That message is you don't have to always be down, but the same God that got me up is the same God that can get you up. Is there anybody here this morning has had a down situation and the only thing they could do is depend on the God who can help them up from their struggling circumstance. I may not have no money, but I got a message. I can imagine the look on some of our faces. I don't have no money. Well, you can go, who is that behind you? Can I? Sometimes we, we turn God into a vending machine. And when we put I try to turn God into this vending machine. We use selected choices. And you know in the vending machine you get selected choices, but the vending machine have different prices on what you're looking for. And that's what we do sometimes. Sometimes we'll put a price on what we're looking for, thinking that if we put some in the machine, God will give us some back. Well, I've come to let you know your theology is defunct this morning because you cannot treat God like a vending machine. Just because you come to God when you want to, God will not always give you back what you ask for. But you got to wait on the Lord. You got to suffer a little bit. You got to go through some stuff. And when you go through some stuff, the grace that God extends to you will not be cheap. Dietrich Bonhoeffer talks about cheap grace and the reason he talks about cheap grace is because sometimes we forget where God has gotten us from. Used to be a game show that used to talk about big bucks and no whammies. And when you were bid on whatever it is you were looking for, the idea was to try and win the big bucks. But if you did not win, you would get this gunk. It was like a whammy. It was like a failure. But what I'm trying to present to you, Grace, this morning is that just because you don't get what you asked for, don't treat God as if God does not care about you. Just because you don't get what you want when you want it does not mean that God has forgotten about you. Am I talking to somebody here? Sometimes you got to go through some stuff. Sometimes you got to bend your knees. Sometimes God is not going to give it to you the way you want it. Sometimes you got to struggle for the right reason. So the grace of God will make you change your life. And you can be more thankful for what God is doing in your life. Rather than treating the grace of God very cheaply. But don't worry. Be happy text talks about what has happened under the sun. The writer of Ecclesiastes is Kohileth. And the term Kohileth means teacher, which translates uh, to preacher. And so the one who is doing the writing here has seen what it's like under the sun. In other words, the under the sun is another way of saying I have seen everything on this side of earth and everything on this side of earth is not fulfilling enough to give me the meaning of life more than what God can give me. Let me make that a little bit clear. Sometimes we, we only praise God because of what we have. Sometimes we only worship God for how we look. Maybe the favor of God has rained down on your life and you may have all of the material possessions that you have desired, but I dare you to think that those possessions will get you to heaven. Let me show you what that looks like. Look at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. 
You, you can have as much as you want. You can have as, as much material. You can have as many cars as you want. You can have as much money as you want. You can have as many degrees as you want. You can have a PhD that down in Mississippi means a post hole digger. You can have whatever you want, but if you don't have Jesus, nothing is more meaningful in life than Jesus. Text says, I have seen what man deals with. And I have come to the conclusion that the best thing for man is to be happy. Here's what I want to pause for a minute and let you know. You got to understand what happiness means. Happiness is not a momentary uh, experience of satisfaction. But happiness says, even when times are down, I still got something to thank God for. Let me tell you, in the midst of your happiness, it should not be fueled by where you are right now. But you should be happy because the same one who got you through yesterday is the same one who's getting you through right now. When I hear the testimony of some of the saints at Grace and when they tell me, Pastor, I had this going on. Pastor, I had that going on. Let's thank God for what you had going on because your had has gotten you to your have right now. Yeah. What, what you had going on, you had some bad days. You had some hills to climb. But when you look around, all of your had bad days does not outweigh your having good days. Is there anybody here can testify that my good days outweigh? Just trying to talk to you. Just trying to get with you. I'm not here to do no theological dissertation about the context of the Somonic presentation. I've come to let you know that yes, you don't have to worry. You just learn how to be happy. Sometimes you just got to put on a smile. Fake it until you make it. Whatever you got going on, just give God praise. Because he's found that there is nothing better for man than just to be happy. And watch this. Do good. Do good to somebody instead of talking about folk. Instead of always publicizing their failures. Tell them you've had the same failures too. We, we, we have this issue with the scope of mental illness. And let me say a little bit about this because we have gotten to the point where we don't want to address the psyche of God's creation. But we are quick to build an institution, throw them behind the doors and throw the keys away. People are not happy behind bars. But there are some people who are happy when folks are behind bars. Follow me now. And that's because misery loves to be entertained by other misery. Misery has the nerve to make everybody else miserable. You have been around a miserable per person before. If you haven't, you need to be around yourself every now and then. Yeah. But a miserable person doesn't want to see nobody happy. A miserable person doesn't want to see nobody with joy. A miserable person don't want to see anybody with a smile on their face. They, the only news they got is bad news. The only thing they got to say is what somebody has done to them. And if it was them, well, you tell them, I'm glad that it's not you. Because the problem of some of our circumstances is we try to put ourselves in other people's shoes. And we have no idea, no understanding of how they're going through what they're going through. But I want you to know this morning, if you're going through something, if you're having a hard time, if you're having a setback, if you're having dark days and gloomerous nights, just know that God still cares for you. Just know that God is working it out. And before long, God will blossom. Be happy. Do good. Feed somebody. 
If you come Wednesday night, which I know you are, amen. Nobody said amen. Let me give you a precursor. We are inviting many people over to our homes for Thanksgiving dinner. We are inviting others over to our abodes to fellowship. But let me ask you the question. Do you know who you are bringing to dinner? Pastor, what do you mean by that? There is a person on the inside of you that has a name called sorrow. You are bringing sorrow to dinner. There's another person on the inside of you named anger. You're bringing anger to dinner. Then some of us may have the snack demon. The snack demon is the one that creates what are called culinary wars. You're looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. The culinary wars is when there's an argument who, about who made the best potato pie. See, you bring in anger and frustration to the dinner, and when the culinary wars start, anger and frustration will let you know that they are there. And so you get upset because you didn't get the sweet potato pie prize. You get upset because the potato salad is more white than it is yellow. You, you, you get upset because the turkey is half cooked. Well, the fact of the matter is just thank God that you got food on the table. Thank God for what you have. Because there are some folk who don't have it at all. It says eat and drink. Eat and drink, eat and drink, eat and drink, eat and drink. Not gluttony, but eat and drink. My grandmama, Minnie Lou and Harriet Akerson, when I was growing up, I remember I was ill one time and I was having some internal stomach issues. My grandmama said, listen, go out there off that tree and get me a piece of bark. I say, I'll go get a piece of bark. I say, okay. So I go and get a piece of bark, and she puts a pot on the stove and puts this bark in the pot. And by the time the water starts boiling, all of the extracts comes out of this bark that was on the tree, and she puts it in a little teacup, and she takes a lemon and a piece of peppermint and put it in there. And then she say, hold on for a minute. She goes up to the old ice box and pulls out this brown bag. And this brown bag has this stuff in it. And when you pop the top on this stuff, this stuff sends out an aroma. But that stuff that she put in there, I say, well, Grandmama, I say, well, what is that? She say, don't worry about it. You just drink it when I give it to you. And so as time went on, Sister Johnson, I, I drunk this potion that my Grandmama gave me. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I start feeling kind of strange. Start feeling a little light on my feet. Start feeling a little lightheaded. And she told me, she said, go lay down and put this quilt over yourself. And I put the quilt over me, Deacon Robertson. When I was laying down, I started sweating. I started perspiring. And when she saw that I was sweating, she says, get up and go change clothes. And, and I wondered, I say, well, Grandmama, I'm sweating. Why am I sweating? She says, I put something on the inside of you that will make it come out of you. Let me drop anchor on you this morning. God has put something on the inside of you that will make you sweat out what's holding you down. He will make you sweat out what's calling sickness in your body. Tell somebody, I'm going to get a hot toddy. No, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. If you come over to my house, don't know. I'm just, I got to move on. Eat and drink and be merry. For the word says, this is a gift from God. Grace, I'm done when I tell you this. We always talk about gifts from God. The question is, do we unwrap what God gives us? 
When was the last time you unwrapped happiness? When was the last time you unwrapped joy? When was the last time you threw your head back and threw caution to the wind and said, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Let me say it again. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. What I have on the inside, the world didn't give it to me and it can't take it away. This peace that I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. This excitement that I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. This praise that I have, the world can't give it to me and the world can't take it away. This jumping in my feet that I have, the world can't give it to me and the world can't take it away. The clapping of my hands, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away well it says it's a gift that's what the text says sometimes we become miserable because we don't know what God has given us grace I want you to know that my joy is not authorized by humans. I want you to know that for me, Thanksgiving is every day. I want you to know that whenever they talk about me, just look at them and say, you must don't know who he is. The next time you hear them talk about you, you tell them, I'm not worried. I'm just happy. When they tell you it doesn't take all of that, you tell them, yes, it does. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Good evening, grace. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. But I'm looking outside right now. And even the sky has begun to rejoice. Because the snow is falling. And so I've come to let you know. That if the sky can get happy. Then maybe we ought to take time. And get happy for what God is doing in our life. If the, if the, the sky can rain down pieces of joy. Then maybe we can rain down joy in our lives somebody say thank you we got to baptize but before we baptize i got to say this is there anybody willing to give their life to jesus christ this morning is there anybody willing to lift the name of jesus and confess with your, your mouth the lord christ and believe in your heart that god has raised him from the dead the bible says you shall be saved is there anybody in here that needs to receive the invitation of Jesus Christ. Come here, come here, Reverend. Reverend, Reverend, Reverend Holder, if you would come. Is there anybody in here that's willing to accept the invitation? Reverend Holder is going to continue to extend the invitation, but we got to get ready to baptize. But my question is, do you have any praise raining down from your heart today to let somebody know that you're not worried? You're going to just continue to be happy. Amen. As our organist plays, the every day is indeed a day of thanksgiving. And part of the reason why we can be thankful is because we rest on the promise and the knowledge that because of our relationship with the Lord, that no matter what comes, no matter what difficulties come, what, no matter what challenges we face, no matter how hard the times and the good times as well as in the bad, that we know that the Lord is with us. So if you do not know for sure that the Lord is with you and you want to get sure about whether or not the Lord is with you, we invite you to come today. We invite you to stand up, to step out of your pews. You want to give your hand to the preacher and your heart to the Lord. We invite you to come. Second call is maybe you don't have a church family that you are a part of. One of the things that I like to say as I'm reminded of the show from the 90s is cheers that 
There ought to be a place that you can come to where everybody knows your name. Where people are glad to see you, that they greet you with a hug or a handshake or however you want to be greeted and they care about you and they love on you. If you don't have a place that you can call home, we invite you to come and join us at Grace. This is a loving church. This is a kind church. People here will look out for you and take care of you and help to disciple you and to help you. And we will provide you with opportunities to be able to serve and love God. If you don't have a place that you call home, we invite you to come and join us here as we love and serve the Lord. And then our last call is maybe you were a part of the church and for whatever reason, uh, you stopped fellowshipping. Things happen. Maybe somebody was unkind to you or unloving. I want to be very clear and transparent that we are all works in progress, that we fall short and sometimes we are not our best selves. So I'm not going to promise that if you decide to come here that everything is going to work out perfectly all of the time because I'd be lying to you. But I do want to make the promise that the spirit of the Lord is in this place and that you will be loved and that you will have the opportunity to serve and connect with Christ and connect with your siblings in the faith. So if you don't have a place that you call home or maybe the Lord is speaking to you today and telling you to come back home, God has God's arms wide open, and we are waiting to be an extension of that love that God has for you. We invite you to come. We invite you to come on your Christian experience to demonstrate your faith in Christ today, or if you want to come back home, we invite you to come. Seeing none, we invite you to sing because every day is indeed a day of thanksgiving. God has indeed been so good to us. He keeps on blessing us. If that is your testimony today, sing along with the organist.